Well, hello, Stacey Murphy here talking about small-scale composting, and yes, you can take it anywhere you go if you do just a bit of planning ahead. The reason I'm posting this video now is that I've been visiting family for the holidays, and like most people in the U.S., my family typically doesn't compost. My parents live in a homeowner's association that doesn't allow composting bins. Yes, insert gasp here. Uh, and so while I'm very passionate about composting, it's common for me to visit people who do not compost, and when I ask them why, it's typically because, because they view it as being stinky and difficult. So what I'm about to share is one strategy to get through the holidays, do a little composting, and share that composting information with your family as well. So first of all, let's do a quick review of why composting is so important and we're all on the same page. Um, I've been seeing statistics from the EPA that say anywhere between 24 and 40 percent of the material going to our landfill is compostable, meaning food scraps and yard waste combined. And regardless of the exact percentage, that's a lot of stuff that could be diverted from landfills and compost and, and in turn composted, considering it adds up to 33 million tons of food wasted each year. Uh, and what happens to material in the landfill? When organic waste breaks down in the landfills, it creates a harmful greenhouse gas, methane, which damages the Earth's atmosphere. And there are so many other reasons to compost, of course, saving money hauling that waste to the landfill, saving money needed to manage those landfills, recycling nutrients and fertility to our soil, increasing our soil's ability to retain water in preparation for droughts, and also to prevent soil erosion, and the list goes on and on. So I'm assuming you're already on board with the idea that composting is a good thing. So what to do when you're visiting someone without composting? And here's my recommendation. It's not a perfect process, but it's a start to being able to compost when you travel. And while there are many kinds of composting, the easiest small-scale composting I found is bokashi, which is a fermented process. And while most outdoor composting processes are aerobic, meaning they require air, this is an anaerobic process that can be done in a simple five-gallon sealed bucket inside. So the first step, Buy yourself some Bokashi bran to take with you. This is the magic ingredient that breaks down the food. It's filled with microorganisms ready to, to digest all your nutrients. Uh, the very experienced folks out there can ferment their own brand, but it's not, it, it is an intensive process and not for everyone. So I recommend ordering online or finding locally made if you can. So now you have your Bokashi bran, and here's the first tricky part. Ask your host if they have a bucket, preferably with a nozzle at the base. Uh, maybe you have to invest in one for them. Here's three ideas for do-it-yourself buckets. First is very simple, buy a five gallon bucket with a lid. That's the easiest way. Two, buy a five gallon bucket and a nozzle, drill a hole at the very, very, very bottom to insert the nozzle and use a little sealant to, uh, to attach that nozzle to the bucket. And the third option is to buy two gallon bucket, two five gallon buckets that will nestle inside of each other, drill quarter inch holes in the bottom of the first bucket, big enough for liquid to drain through. And uh, don't even worry about inserting the nozzle. I'll share why in a moment. And again, don't forget the lid. So to start the bucket off right, what you want to do is pour half a cup of the Bokashi brand in the bottom of that bucket. And you'll want to double that if you're meat eaters and pour a full cup of Bokashi brand in the bottom of the bucket. So now you've got your composting bucket ready. Here's the second tricky part. You got to convince your family or friends to put their food scraps in the bucket. You have to find a convenient place that short circuits their habit of heading to the garbage can and train people to sprinkle some Bokashi on top each time they add food. So you wanna add one to two tablespoons of Bokashi to every two inches of food waste that people add to the bucket. So make sure everyone knows to keep the bucket sealed completely. This is anaerobic, no air should be involved in this process. So keep it sealed except when they're adding those food scraps. And perhaps some encouragement is needed, some reminding, uh, some loving notes placed on garbage cans, you know, something like compost because a rind is a terrible thing to waste. Uh, and so adding those notes around to let people know what to do. And uh, like I said earlier, you can put meat, dairy, and oils into the system, which is a huge benefit of the Bokashi system. Now, You've got people putting scraps in their bucket. You've got them adding the Bokashi brand. That's awesome. Here's the third tricky part. There will be a bit of a fermented smell, sour smell, kind of like beer or pickles. It's totally normal. It's not very strong if it's fermenting properly. So getting people to love this smell as much as you do is probably not going to happen, but it's not too much to ask that they won't mind the smell. If they are fermentation lovers, it's a pretty easy sell. Now, the thing that smells the most, 
there may be a bit of liquid that forms at the bottom of the bucket and there's a couple things you can do about that. This is, this is the stinkiest part of the process and so you want to keep people from smelling this. Uh, so this is the culprit, like I said, of heavy odors. So doing everything you can to protect folks from getting turned off by this is really important. So one, if you're using a single bucket with no nozzle, just the bucket with no holes at the bottom, what you want to do, this, this liquid is going to form at the bottom and you have no way of getting it out. So what you want to do is add extra bran to soak up that liquid. You cannot have too much bran, but you can have too little. So throw in a little extra. And if you have old bread that's getting tossed out, that'll help soak up that liquid too. Or paper with black and white ink, uh, preferably not the color inks. All of those things will start to soak up that liquid. So if you're doing just in a bucket, that's what I recommend. Extra, extra bran and soak soaked material like bread and paper. Uh, the second option, if you have a nozzle, you can empty the liquid every couple of days and pour this liquid down the toilet. Uh, number three, if you're using the double bucket method without the nozzle, you can lift the, one, the top bucket out and all the liquid has come through to the bottom bucket and then you can basically take that bottom bucket and dump that in the toilet. Now the, draw, the drawback to the two bucket, two bucket method, pardon me, is that it's a big stinky mess to lift one out temporarily. So for the faint of smell, I recommend using the one bucket method and lots of extra bran. Uh, after all, you're traveling, so your composting process doesn't have to be perfectly efficient. It just has to convince these folks that it's not stinky. Uh, and you can also add a quarter cup of sugar to boost the microbial level and take away some of that smell as well. All right, so now you've got a bucket full of food scraps. Here's the fourth tricky part. When your bucket is close to full, maybe about three quarters or seven eighths full, add another half cup of bokashi. Uh, and if there's meat, dairy, and oil in there, I would recommend adding a full cup to the top. Seal the bucket very tightly and store it in a dark location for two weeks while that food waste ferments. This means you may leave before it's done. You may need to text your family and remind them that it's ready. And then what does ready mean? So here's the fifth tricky part. Ready means that the contents of the bucket are ready to be buried in the soil. So best, best practice is to dig a trench 8 to 12 inches deep and bury the contents. If you're not staying long enough to bury the compost yourself, I recommend digging the trench when you're there to make it really easy on your family. They're more likely to dump it if there's a place already ready. And make sure everyone knows that there may be some things that still look like food. The food is chemically altered, but not physically broken down into fine dust. It will further break down underground. And you can see that here in this, in this photo. So here's the last tricky part. They now have a bucket that smells like fermented beer and pickles. They're going to need to clean it out if you're not around. All right, so let's do some quick troubleshooting. I know this process is not perfect. Uh, after all, you're trying to compost where nobody has composted before. So if you have a family where you know the burying and cleaning the bucket is just not going to fly, you could add lots more bran, seal the bucket, store it in a cold, dark place. It'll continue to ferment. And then when you come back, you can bury it the next time you're there. And many folks do this in cold climates anyway because they have winter and the ground is frozen. So if you're going somewhere with frozen ground, this may be your strategy as well. And if you're in an urban center with limited access to the ground, this is your chance to get really creative and see if there's a community garden nearby or a tree pit on the street that could use some compost. Uh, and sometimes people notice, uh, one other troubleshooting note, sometimes people notice white mold in their bokashi bucket. It's totally normal. If it's black or blue mold, however, that is not normal. Add a lot of bran, a little bit of sugar, and bury it right away and clean the bucket out really well. And like I said, this is not the perfect plan, but for the passionate earth huggers and soil builders out there, I think it's an appealing choice rather than sending food to the landfill. I recognize the trickiest part of all of this is going to be getting your friends and family to agree to this science experiment in the first place. But if you have kids nearby, it could be a really easy sell. If you can make this not stinky and make it easy for your family and friends, who knows, maybe they'll continue composting after you leave. So what other objections do you hear to composting at home? Uh, can you foresee any issues with trying this with your family? Any other ideas for how to make this really easy for the family and friends we visit? Post your comments below. below. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Stacy Murphy here.